Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this relaxing, beautiful garden door, perfect for summertime, and this is totally suitable for beginners. This video is brought to you by The Pottering Artist. This beautiful, independent, ad-free magazine is published bi-monthly by UK artist Alison Fennell. This magazine is available in print or digital editions and is packed with creative prompts, inspiration, tutorials, and exercises to get your creating under Alison's gentle experience guidance. In addition to the in-depth lessons on the pages of the Pottering Artist magazine, there are also giveaways and competitions. Speaking of that, Allison is giving five lucky viewers each a copy of issue three of the Pottering Artist as well as an 8x10 archival watercolor animal print. Combined, that's a $38 value. Just leave a comment on my blog post featuring this project for a chance to win. This giveaway is open worldwide. If you would like to learn more about the Pottering Artist magazine or a pick up a copy for yourself, please click the link in the video description. And now on to the tutorial. Today we're going to start off by sketching onto our watercolor paper with a watercolor pencil. And um, I don't have my white mat down today. I think this might make everything look a little bit more true to life. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of having the dark background and then the white paper on top. I think it'll help quite a bit. So I'm using just a gray. This is a Spectrum Aqua Blend pencil in gunmetal. And I'm going to sketch on a um, kind of a garden door. This scene is going to be partly from a reference photo which I'll link below, and partly from my imagination. Um, I wanted to have the, uh, the look of a garden wall, and I thought that it would be just kind of a really lovely, uh, lovely scene to do. So since we are drawing a door, it has to be fairly symmetrical. Obviously, you're seeing at a little bit of an angle, so that's going to... Um, you're going to have a little foreshortening, so it's going to make it a little bit not perfectly symmetrical, but you want to make sure it feels symmetrical. We're going to have a little bit of a, of like a threshold here before we get to the door, door jam. And plus this is an old kind of garden gate, so I'm not going to worry too much about it being perfect. Um, I'm going to accentuate, so I'm changing the reference photo up. I'm going to make like the handle a little bit more pronounced. Um, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make the hinges here on the door a little bit more. I'm going to turn my paper so I can put them in a little bit easier. I'll make the hinges a little bit more decorative. Put like kind of like a little heart shape on the end, like a spade kind of on the end. Um, there is quite of a bit of detailing around the door and the stonework. And this is where you can really play and have fun. But if you know, if you want to keep it a little bit more true to the picture you can. I like to um, gild the lily a little bit, especially when we're just going to be adding in kind of dribs and drabs of paint to, to like give us the feeling of this texture and the stonework. And I love that I'm going in with a watercolor pencil because I can be so loose with my sketch here. Now we're also going to be putting plants kind of dripping down the side of the picture, so I don't have to worry about it being perfect. If I don't have my arch perfect, if I don't have like my stonework perfect, it's not really going to matter that much. You know, just like have fun with it. Use your creative imagination. Use your light, your artistic license. Um, I want a piece of wood across the bottom of the door here. And then we'll have, we'll do four slats of wood down. So we'll do one down the middle and then we'll do. Now my trick when I'm doing anything architectural is, or anything symmetrical whatsoever, is I flip my paper around because if, um, if something is really off, I'm going to notice it when I flip it. This stuff, these, this lead is going to dissolve when I add my water. Um, so I'm not worried too much. Now, make sure that you don't have like lotion on your hand if you're going to do this and, you know, let your hands drag on the paper or just put a piece of paper uh, down so that you don't end up with like, um, with like, um, you know, a grease smear on your paper or anything. 
Now I'm not really going to draw any more stones like in the wall because I'm going to do that with a paintbrush. We're going to I'm going to show you quite a few little little cheats and tricks. Now I want to have like a little bit of a like a stone pad here. Now also because I am using a reference photo, my paper's not exactly the same dimensions or the same aspect ratio, so I am going to be like branching out and filling the area a little bit. Now plant pot right here. That there is a plant pot in the reference photo. Let's bring that pad out a little bit so I can fit my plant pot on it. And then we're going to do another one over kind of over here. I'm just debating whether I want to put that on the lower on the ground and maybe make that little... You know what? I think I will do that. I think I'll make that lower on the ground. The paper I'm working on is... Um, make this bigger for, for just for gives a little more scale. Um, this is the Paul Rubens Hot Press Watercolor Paper Block. I don't have to worry about any of those lines. They're going to dissolve. This one will be a little bit smaller because it's further away from us. It's back and away. And I think I'll just throw on some... I'm going to do geraniums. There's um, hydrangea in the picture, but the the composition of those plants are very similar. Now I might actually throw in some lupins here and I'm just going to put the, the spikes just for my own imagine my own reminder right now and I'm going to have some wisteria up there but I don't need to sketch that in because that's going to be um, that's going to be in green and I'm just going to keep it kind of light in there. So I basically just want to map everything out. Now the paints I'm going to use today are um, brand new. They are two paints by Paul Rubin. So I've used the pans quite a bit, but they came out with a floral set. And um, the company that sells them on Amazon asked me if I'd like to try them. So I'm trying them for the first time today. I don't have them panned up yet, so I just put them in my little palette. I have uh, permanent yellow, lemon yellow, which is a Hansa yellow light. These are all, uh, they're all, except for five of the colors in this 24 set, are single pigment, which is really exciting. I've got rose red. I have Hooker's Green Brilliant, which is PG-17. I have a French Ultramarine. I have um, Turquoise Light, which is like a cobalt teal, because I have it right next to that little dreg of Daniel Smith cobalt teal right there. And I have Burned Brown, which is like a burned umber. And I am using watercolor brushes by Tulip, uh, by Zen Artist Supplies, and this is the Tulip Collection. And these are still on sale for 20 bucks on Amazon if you were interested in these. Um, we're gonna use these today. I'm gonna start off with the large flat brush and I'm gonna mix up some gray. I'm gonna take some of this burnt umber color. Ooh, very concentrated. I'm gonna grab some French Ultramarine. Ooh, that's gorgeous. I'm not sure if the tube um, Van Gogh paint, uh, not Van Gogh, Paul Rubens paints have ox skull in them or not. I'll have to find out. It didn't uh, list it, it didn't say that it contained it, but it didn't say it didn't contain it on the um, on the listing. And what I'm going to do is actually wet this whole area here. I'm not going to wet over the plant pots, but I am going to wet all of the stone area. I'm just going to kind of go around my little plant pots a bit. These brushes are a synthetic black squirrel. Actually, you know what? I can go over the whole door. I'm going to go over the whole door as well. And that way I can wash out any lines that I didn't end up wanting. These are a synthetic squirrel. They're not as soft as the Jerry's Artorama uh, Mimics that I like so much, the ones by Creative Mark, the uh, synthetic squirrels by them. But they are, they do seem to be, they do seem to be all right. I don't like them as much. They are cheaper though, so that's something uh, to, to keep in mind. I can go right over those hinges too. As long as I'll be able to see my design, I'm fine with that. I'm only going down to the threshold though, to the, uh, to the edge of the wall to where the floor meets the wall. So just wall door that, that area. 
So I'm just going to tip my paper to the light and see if that I've covered everything. So if you don't if you don't work too hard, you can leave as much of your pencil, your water soluble pencil as you want. So I'm going to take some of this. This is my first wash. I would say these these are flowing pretty well. I'd say they probably have ox gall on them. A little bit in there. Getting my shadows. I might add a little bit of yellow ochre. It looks like there's a yellow ochre in this um, in this set. But I think they call it something else. But the PY42 is what we use as yellow ochre, and that's looks like that's what's in there. I think I'll want that for a little bit of warmth. Let me grab that. I'll list all these colors in the video description. Yellow Sienna Deep, I think that's a... Yeah, it looks like a yellow ochre. Single pig pigment, I love that. I love when I can find single pigment paints. These aren't terribly terribly expensive, and I think there was a coupon on Amazon. I think they were... I might want more paint than that. I think they were like $56, but then there was like a, a coupon. So when you're working from wet paint, you want to make sure that you don't get globs of it on your brush. And I don't want to waste that. So what I do is I just work it out onto my palette until I've got it um, not globby on my brush. I typically work from dry. So I can add some of this up here to the plant area and I know it's not going to bother anything. Um, oops, I got a hair in there. My cat has been, I've been making sure I freshen my water every night. My cat's been popping up on my craft table and drinking out of my water cups and leaving our fur everywhere. <laughs> Usually that's the reason I don't have a silicone mat here actually, but then I thought it looked pretty good on camera uh, to have that dark contrast because um, the cat's been getting getting on my table and drinking my water. But I don't use any cadmiums typically. I, I don't have any, think I have any in my upstairs palettes anyway. So, and I, and I, I leave fresh water when I'm done for the day, so I'll be ready for the next day. Okay, now for some texture, I don't have a lot of dark color here, but some, for some texture, I can crumple up a paper towel and give it a little texture this way. And that's also gonna dry my paper enough that I can go in and put some bricks in. So you get a nice little model texture there. Now for the bricks, I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. The thing I like about the set, it's not only that it's affordable, is that you've got a great selection of different brush sizes here. I'm giving that a stir. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through and do little stones or bricks here and there. I can have bigger ones on this side because it's a little bit closer to us because of the way the wall is angled. Not super, um, not super big difference, but it's there. And this is going to give you a softer look, so you're not going to have a really sharp focus, which I like when I'm doing stuff like this. I can always go in and add more detail later, but it's kind of... Uh, hard to blur that and make it look like background afterwards. So I'm going in and throwing in shadows. I want texture. I want this to look like it, like it's like a really old like garden wall. Stuff like this is just fun to relax and paint intuitive, uh, intuitively. I thought this would be really good to go with that, the Pottering Artist magazine too, because it's just so, it's so much about the process and about the zen and the kind of meditative nature, nature of painting. At least that's what, that's the takeaway that I found in the magazine. Just such an, a lovely, relaxing read. Sit out on the porch, have a cup of tea. Read a magazine, I love that. All right, I'm also gonna go ahead and add a little bit of shadow to the door while I'm at it. I love my glass palettes too. Um, like I mentioned, I typically work from dry paint, but then I find I don't use my glass palettes that much and I really love using my glass palettes. I'm gonna throw some of this nice dark shadow up here in the door, kind of the recess of the door. We're gonna have some overhanging plants, plus it's set back a little bit, so it would be. We 
would be a little bit more shadowed. I'm totally feeling the zen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll just trail off and not talk for a couple minutes. Sorry about that. Might be a refreshing change of pace, though. Now, this is a block. Now, people will call blocks often pre-stretched paper. That's kind of a misnomer. It's just, they're just bound on all four sides. They're not, they're not, never going to stay as flat as, like, paper that you've stretched properly, which is when you've soaked the paper and then you've taped it down wet with special tape, uh, gummed paper tape. But, um, but it's not bad, especially at a small size like this. I'm grabbing a little more brown on my brush. I'm going to alter the stone color a little bit and stone shape. Some bigger ones. A lot of suggestion is suggesting here. There's not a lot of real, um, not a lot of real detailed stuff. I'm dragging my brushes got a little dry, so I noticed my bristles are spreading apart. So I'm like, ah, well that's like that. I'm going to get a little more bang for my buck and I'm just gonna drag in some dry brushing over here. And that's gonna give me that, it's gonna start building up that door texture that I want. Why waste that paint? Why waste that brush? You know, it's doing what I need it to do for this, so I'm gonna skip over here and do that. My paper's still wet, but if you're, um, if it's starting to dry and your brush is dry and your paint's pretty dry that you're applying, you can get some of those cool dry brush, brush textured. Check, ugh, dry brush textures. Now what I'm going to do is this little side brush pounds. This can like give us the impression of like um, mortar between some of the stones or lighter cement or lighter little pebbles. I'll push more on the side just to give them a little bit larger of a size. It can also give us the illusion. It could also be dappled sun. There's something else I want to do while it's still wet is I want to start building in some foliage up here. I'm actually going to go, I'm going to go with this right here. You can use a large round if you want to, but this cat's tongue brush is actually why I bought this set and I'm trying to break it in because it was feeling a little stiff. I'm going to do a little mix here. I didn't set up my paints in a great order. Uh, take some of that hooker's green. Usually hooker's green is a mix. This reminds me of the Yarker Russian green actually. Grab a little of that permanent lemon. Make myself a nice light spring green. Soak it up in my brush as much as I can. And I'm going to start... I'm just going to add a little sunny foliage up here. Start. The thing I like about a cat's tongue is that I can... Look, I'm twist and pat, twist and pat. Move that brush around. See, I can let some of it drizzle down too over the door and press that, move that paint out of the way. Now the cool thing about the colors I used for the stones is they're all sedimentary colors. And that means that they're earth pigments. Well, they don't have to be earth pigments. They're usually a mineral, um, mineral type of pigment, but they sit on top of the paper. They don't sink in like our purples and our pinks tend to want to sink into the paper. They are going to sit on top. And what happens then is that if I said, oh, I don't want a brick there, I can scrub it out for the most part. I can scrub out the shadow on the door and bring some um, some foliage down there. So I really, really like that. Now, if you want to be like mixed media, uh, I don't have any upstairs in my studio where I'm working. They're downstairs in my basement studio, not in my office. But you, like, you could drizzle some brush out, which is like a pigment powder crystal in there, and you could get some you know, cool textures as well. But I know not everybody has that too, so I didn't want to, I also didn't want to bring in something that uh, not everybody would have access to. But that's an idea if you have that. Now I'm just getting in some of that hooker's green on its own. Because honestly, the more you can do in one go, the more natural your painting's going to look and the more loose it's going to look. And I know I hear a lot of people ask me, how do I loosen up? My stuff is so stiff. Uh, my painting looks so stiff. I don't like the way it looks. Um, use a big brush, you do wet into wet, things like that are going to give you that stiffer look. Oh, don't you just want to be sitting out here on this garden and, you know, having a nice cup of tea or 
glass of wine and enjoying this beautiful summer day. Paint the world the way you want it to be. It's your world. It can be however you want it to be. Oh, I just love that splash of green. Things are starting to finally get green in my neck of the woods. And um, I just love, I love walking in my neighborhood and seeing the lilacs and the flowering crab trees and crab apple trees and all of the gorgeous foliage. Look at this red. Isn't that pretty? Rose red. I'm going to grab a little ultramarine with that. Um, I'll have to do it right in the same the same area here. That's all right. I didn't put two. I only put a little drop of each color out because I, I know I really want to pan these, but um, I didn't have any, I thought I might put them in a palette of their own, but I didn't have any leftover palettes, any extra palettes. So like, well, I'll just use it in here right now. Oh, I just, I love wet into wet watercolor. I love how it flows. I took a little trip this weekend, went with some of my girlfriends to a rubber stamp convention and that's just what I needed. I just needed a little creative break. And then when I was looking, trying to figure out what I wanted to paint today, and I'm looking through reference photos, and everything was just beautiful. I'm like, that's beautiful, and that's beautiful, and I want to paint that, and I want to paint that. And I just made folders and folders of gorgeous things that I wanted to spark, that sparked some inspiration. So, you know, take those trips. Get out of the house. Get, you know, go for a walk. Do whatever it takes to get those creative juices flowing again if you find yourself um, scraping the bottom of the creativity barrel. Because that's how I was feeling. I was actually really surprised that I liked my dog that I painted last week because I hadn't, I'd been so frustrated with everything I'd made lately and I was like, whoa, I like this one. Awesome. <laughs> there was a quote that my painting instructor, I took a class last fall and my instructor was quoting one of his favorite artists and uh, his f favorite artist, I think it was James Fitzgerald, had been interviewed and... Um, he said something to the effect of, how come you you talk so well about paintings you did a long time ago, but you don't like anything you may, you're you making right now? And he said, because I forget the battle, you know, and he forget, you forget the battle that, you, that you're having when you're painting something. And then, um, and then after you've given up some time and you look back at it, you're like, oh, that was actually pretty good. And I think that's, I think that's so true. You know, if you're frustrated when you're painting something, you might paint something, paint something that's gorgeous, but you just can't see it because you're so frustrated with how it's coming out. So I'm going to go back to the first brush. I'm going to wet around, actually I'm just going to wet this whole remaining foreground area. I'm going to go over the area where I'm going to put the lupins, just in case I change my mind and decide I don't want them. I'm not going to go over the pots though. I can, I am going to kind of scribble in with the, with the edge of my brush so I can get rid of the lines that I made for the edges of the, edges of the pots just because um, I don't want to have any, I don't want to commit to any lines yet in case I want to make the pot a little bigger. So I'm just going to kind of scrub in there and get rid of any of those excess lines. These dissolve really well. And uh, there are a lot of really nice watercolor pencils that are very affordable nowadays. There's um, well, Spectrum, uh, Spectrum Aquas here that I'm using. Those aren't very expensive uh, and you can buy them by collection like florals or marine or landscape or whatever. And then there's no doubles between the sets so that you can build your collection as you go. Arteza makes a really nice watercolor pencil set that's very affordable. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. Now I want the foreground to be a little bit brighter. Uh, not brighter, like, I, I mean warmer, I guess would be the better, the better term. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that. They call it um, yellow sienna deep, but uh, I would call it yellow ochre because it's the same pigment and it's about that same color, or a raw sienna, you can use either. So, uh, often raw sienna is a mix, but you just want that kind of warm neutral yellow that's not very strong. You could use a Naples yellow if it's not too opaque. Sometimes your Naples yellow mm, can be a little bit more opaque than what you want. I love a Naples yellow for like, uh, oops, I just went into that pot. That's all right, it's not gonna really make a difference. Um, I like to use a Naples yellow on beaches because it's such a warm, um, mellow yellow. Let's get that sunshine on the, on the ground. And it might be nice to have kind of a little bit of a dappling here too. So to get a dappled effect, like the, you know, the sun's kind of like streaming through some trees. You want that dappled look. What I will do is grab a round brush. 
This is the number eight round also. I'm just gonna use the brushes in that set. I think that is a nice one to start off with if you're new to watercolor or if you wanna, you know, you just want an extra set. I'm gonna actually, um, I'm gonna put something down. I'll put the little, put the little cheat sheet from the, uh, from the watercolor, the little swatch sheet, cause I always make my own. Anyway, I'm just gonna speckle on like that. There, that will give it a little bit of a dappled look. I think I will also just kind of texturize it a bit. And I'm gonna go in and throw in some shadows too, like around the, the stepping stone there and the plant pots. So I don't get confused though, I'm gonna blot out a little bit of that yellow I put in that plant pot. It wouldn't make a difference um, to the way I would paint it, but it's just gonna confuse me, I think. I'm gonna be confused to where the bottom of that paint pot is, so I just wanna plant pot. I just want to uh, have that in there like that, a little bit of shadow around this guy. I like to paint in a loose style, especially if it's a subject like this where it's it's a nice garden. It's something that's relaxed and mellow. Um, grab a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I am going to maybe put some cracks in the stepping stone. Make it look a little more natural. And I think I'll put a pattern on that on the ground, just a very gentle kind of like patio type natural stone patterning. Because I have much more ground showing than, than they have in the photo, so I just want it to be a little bit more interesting. And then I'll vary the color of some of the blocks. And I think I'll do that with my um, with my flat brush. Actually, I use a smaller flat brush so I have a little more versatility. So cleaning my brush, just blotting it on my napkin. I think you can see my napkin over there. And just loosely adding some. I'm going to take that spatter out. It's on the plant pot. I plant pot. I don't want that on there. And I am going to also just kind of texture a little bit like this. So I haven't put any detail in anything yet. So I know it looks really loose and messy, but we haven't detailed anything. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. At this point, I think I want to dry this because I can't really go in and put any detail on there. And if I paint the plant pots, they're going to flood out into the background, and I don't want that. So we'll dry this, come back, and we'll finish it up. Okay, I used my heat tool to dry this. You can let it air dry. That's a nice time to take a break if you're letting it air dry. And I'm gonna see if I can mix up a good terracotta color. I think I can. In fact, I like to do a lot of paper on the paper mixing. So what I mean by that is um, I'm gonna wet the area here where I want my pot. And I'm sure I will have to refine it a little bit because I my sketch was a little messy. And I'm going to start off with uh, probably the most dominant color, which would be this more of a yellow ochre color. I'm going to throw that kind of in the front where I'd have more, more of a highlight. I'm going to grab some of the brown, more on the right side where we got a little bit more shadow happening. To get the reddish color, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my rose and some yellow. I'm gonna blot my brush though so I don't end up getting too much water in the mix. And that gives, that's a nice, 
That's a nice color. So when you have single pigment colors like this, you can really mix uh, a lot of what you need. Don't worry if it's um, still a little soft looking because we haven't, this is still the first layer on this pot. We're not, we haven't defined anything there yet. And then I like to let the color just kind of do its thing. Oh yeah, that's right. We got that cobalt teal out. Why don't we put a little patina on this pot? Cause you know how they get kind of like, um, they get kind of like, this sounds awful. They get kind of moldy, basically. Is it moldy? I don't know what it is, but they get that little bit of a coppery patina. That's some pretty mold, guys. That's some pretty mold. I don't know if that's what it is, but you know what I mean. And then it will kind of blossom in the uh, in the wash there, and we'll get that pretty coppery patina that you get on those terracotta pots. Because right, it will kind of push out some of the pigment and give you that whitish as well. Hey, you can use some white gouache if you need to, but I would wait a bit. Let's see if you need it towards the end. Because if you, the, the thing is, I have no problem with adding white, but if you add it too early, it can kind of muddy up anything that you put over it. So we're still in that first layer, so we don't want any mud yet. And I got enough little yellow ochre there. I think I can smidgen, kind of squeak out of there. When you get paints from other countries, often the, the names are different. They have different customary names. So it's nice when they offer pigment information. And most, and you know, your, your artist quality paint should offer pigment information. A lot of times the, uh, the paints are a better value from like Korea or China. And part of it is, you know, and this, their things, their, their manufacturing costs are less, but also so many more people watercolor in those countries that it's not a specialty item. It's, it's a more, it's a more common hobby. Love that mixed terracotta color we made. And we'll get in some of that, that darker brown. Now here's a good time for me to flip it because um, I want to make sure that that this is uh, fairly symmetrical. I just want it to make to look, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look like my pots are not going to fall over on me. I think that looks alright. Soon we have some flowers in it. It's going to be fine. And let's put some of that lovely turquoise. Oh, so pretty. I love that they, they use good pigments too, which is nice because I'll eventually re um, review these paints, but I haven't, I've just, this is the first time I've actually even touched them. So I want to play with them. Oh, I like that. You could also do some salt in this wash if you really wanted a strong texture, but I think this is, this is good the way it is. Now with that brush, I think I'm just going to stick to the same number eight round. You could go with a liner if you're feeling like, um, if you're feeling nervous about using a brush this big. It's not really that big, but if you're feeling, if you're feeling unsure about it, you can definitely go in with a liner brush. I'm going to make myself up some more of that gray with the ultramarine blue and the brown. They called it burnt brown. It's like a burnt umber. And I'm going to start to add some shadows. So the, the plant pots are wet. I do have to be careful if I'm going to work here on the door that I don't drag my hand in there. But I did want to really get that, started to get that defined. I'm just making sure you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll put it up like this. Hopefully that will help you see what I'm doing. Because I like to use my brush straight up and down with my paper. Because I can work right on the tip. So a fat brush like a number 8 or a number 12, if it's a good brush, you've still got a hairline like point on that. So you can get your details. And then if you need a thicker line, then you can go ahead and do that too. Now I want to really capitalize on the organic nature of the stone. So I am going in and tracing the edge of the stone. 
and I want to capitalize on the organic edge of that wisteria. Now I'm just suggesting things here, guys. I don't have any wisteria growing in my at my house. I don't know it like I know, say, a lilac or some other plants I'm more familiar with, but I can get the impression of it, and that's what this is. This is definitely an impressionistic watercolor style. And, you know, that might not be your cup of tea. You can always do it how you want to do it. But sometimes you just want to warm up with something that's a little bit looser and easier. Now, look at that. Just getting that dark in there, look at how it really, um, it really starts to carve out the detail, really starts to give you some depth. You gotta have that contrast in there. You can paint something in any crazy color way you want, as long as you have, I think my door pretty crooked there before, um, as long as you have your values right, you're gonna be fine. Oh yeah, that door was pretty crooked. I don't know how I didn't catch that before. So we're gonna alter that a little bit. Don't be afraid to change it up if you need to. Now I'm using the edge of my brush because I want to get a little bit of, I want to fade out that shadow. Drag it this way because I've got a piece of wood going that way. Try not to set my hand in that, that flower pot. Get some definition between the doors. I did not intend this video to be so long. Hopefully you can watch it in parts if you're interested in doing it, but it's a little bit long. We're gonna do a shadow under the door. Let me mix up a little bit more again. We've got our brown, we've got our blue. Now you can use burnt sienna if you, uh, if you want instead of burnt umber. You can mix that with the ultramarine. You're gonna get a nice dark. And it will be a little bit warmer of a brown too, so it'll get, you will get more of a summer feel to your picture. Um, again, working straight up and down. I know my hand's in the way sometimes when I do that. So I'm trying to lift it up so you can see. I want a little peek under the door like that. Give us some depth. Invite us to think about what's beyond the door. It's probably a potting shed. Just like to suggest things here. Okay, remember we're going to have flowers in there, so you don't want to have some like a bunch of dark lines back there. To find a few of these bricks. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit more brown in there. A little bit more water, not a lot. I don't want it like running or anything. And I am going to define around the stone pad. Get a little bit of a shadow on the front edge. A little bit of a shadow in there. A little bit of shadow near the shadowed side, and a little bit of shadow over here near this shadowed side. At the bottom of the pot. Switch to your liner if you're having a hard time uh, getting the detail you want. I'm putting in some just some indications where some stones might meet. I don't want to. I don't want to paint every detail because if I do that, then then your brain, like the viewer, starts looking at the detail and not like enjoying the picture. Okay, now I want to do some geraniums in the pots over here, and I'm going to do pink geraniums. So I'm going to use this rose on its own. And they're just going to be dabs. Now we're not seeing those in a lot of detail. 
The reason I'm doing this now, and if you need to scrub something out, go ahead and do that with your brush, is because I don't want to be putting like those hinges in or a bunch of details behind them before I've gotten these in, or I might not be able to put these in. So I can go right over the stones there. It's going to stand up fine. Now something else I like to do. Now you don't have to do this. This is totally personal preference. I'm going to grab some fresh water there. I like to I like to do that when I'm doing especially geraniums. I like to flick some paint in there because I uh, I like that looser look. Because a lot of times it almost feels like they're just kind of like bursting out of the pots. And you can even go over the pots a little bit. They're probably still a little wet from the from the wash because we didn't dry it after we painted those. Yeah, let them just let them go wild, you know. You need the organic, uh, the life, you know, organic, inorganic. Stones are inorganic. They were never alive. We want that to coordinate. We want to um, contrast from the organics of our foliage. So now I'm going to use the, I'm going to go in with some of the green by itself. The nice thing about a ceramic palette, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can go to the dollar store and you can get just a plate, or you can use an old plate that you have from home is that it doesn't beat up. And I get that all the time. People say, how come my, my paint's always beating up on my palette? You can help your palettes. Like I find metal is better than plastic as far as the beading issue. And the more you use it, the less it's gonna beat up. Um, but glass never beads up, ceramic never beads up. So if you're having that issue, just find a, find a white plate and use that or a white tile or something. I like a plate because it will, um, because it won't, um, it has a lip, so you're not going to lose your paint all over your table. So that's always good. But tiles work as well. Oh shoot, I just totally contaminated that. But luckily it's not in a permanent palette, so I don't have to, I haven't contaminated like a whole pan of color. And I'll use some of it. You know, let it just, let it go wild with the color. Oh, love that. I love that. You don't have to spatter if it's not your thing. Now, if you get mud, if you're like, oh no, Lindsay, my color's all just mushed together. I ruined it. No, you didn't ruin it. Just go in there with a paper towel. Look, just blot it. The world is fine again. Isn't that great? Okay, so now I'm going to go in with some of that color there since I uh, ended up with way more of that than I intended because I uh, accidentally got green in my yellow. I'm just going to go soak up a bunch of that. And I am going to add some trails of this color. Think of like a beaded door. You ever have one of those beaded doorways when you're in college? Um, you know, just beaded doorway between like your kitchen and the living room or something. You know, think of it like a beaded doorway and you're just tapping on the beads. Some more green. And you're going to get a different texture because remember we used a different brush the first time we used that cat's tongue. You build layers of texture. It doesn't have to be like a photograph. I mean, if you want a photograph, go find a garden, take a photograph. These layers of different colors and that's where you get that nice depth. And quite frankly, if you're looking at a garden, you're not seeing every little petal, you're not seeing every leaf, you're seeing the, the pretty arrangement of everything together. Uh, I think I'm going to go in with, oh, you know what, I want a little more, I want that, some of that yellow in front of the door. Look how bright, it looks like the, looks like the light's hitting those petals, isn't that pretty? Don't you love that when you look outside and you see the light kind of going through the trees and it just glows? I love that. I'm not worried about water spots because, I, honestly, I think that's going to help a picture like this. It's going to help it give it that liveliness. You know, people say, oh, I wish I could loosen up with watercolor. This is how you do it. You don't, you don't fret, you don't fuss, you have fun. Now, I, I feel like I want a little, maybe a little bit of blue in my walls, maybe a little bit of this, um, this color too. Could do, where's a good place to integrate it? Let's start and integrating it in some of the bricks. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, 
integrate it in the door a little bit. I think I need a little bit more of this blue in the door. Get a little bit of that um, into some of the pathway here. I might not end up putting lupins in here. Thought I was going to, but I might not. We could also do a little bit of pink. Mix it in with that cobalt tea a little bit. Get some purples. If you get too much, well, it's a great chance to texture. Just blot it and give yourself a little texture. All these colors are fair game because you've already used them. Uh, I'm going to go with the flat. I want a different sort of shape, I think. And because I, I do want some cooler bricks up there, so I'm going to go in with the blue, ultramarine blue. I'm going to go right into that gray color that I mixed. I could add a little bit of that teal color in there too. And let's see, I think I'll actually add some to the door first. Using the chisel edge of the brush, rocking it up and down. And I can also dry brush a little bit. I can give a little bit in here with the chisel edge. I'm having so much fun painting this. I know it's taking um, it's taking a bit of time, but a lot of you guys told me last week that's all right. It's okay. Take the time it needs. And thank you so much for that, for the permission to do that <laughs> in a tutorial. You have no idea how much that that helps. That means it's it's so wonderful. Thank you. A little shadow over here. I like to skip around and I kind of say, okay, what does it need where? And, you know, where is the color temperature cooler? Where would this feel, you know, cool? Think if you were to go walk barefoot in this garden, where would you step and where would it feel cooler? And those places where you think it'd feel cooler, like next to something that's shadowing, um, like where it's getting a little bit of shadow, that's where you want to put your blues. Places it's going to feel warmer, like if you stepped on it, it would be warm under your feet or hot. That's a place you want to put your, like your yellow ochres and, and whatnot. So kind of think that as you're going through. I really love how the geraniums turned out. I know they're loose, but I think that's exactly what they should be. So here's where it would be warm if I was to step with my feet out on this patio. I really want to step out on that patio, don't you? I think it would be marvelous. A little more water because my bristles aren't sticking together and I don't want a streaky dry brush texture here. I feel like I need a little more color in there. Just tap it in. Okay, now I want to bring a little more life into the flowers up there. I'm going to go with the number eight round. Or you could do the 12 round, doesn't really matter. Whatever you whatever you got handy. And I'm actually going to start off just with the, the rose red on its own. Ooh, that's kind of thick. There we go. And I just want these. Gosh, you could, do, you could do grapes, honestly. You could do grapes hanging. You could do wisteria. Let's see, what other hanging flowers are there? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you can think of any other hanging flowers. I don't know how many different colors there are. I always think of the purple wisteria. But grapes would be really cool to do. It would be very similar. Yeah, I guess I don't really want the lupins because the wisteria and the lupins are so similar in shape, I think it might detract from, they might detract from each other. So it was a good thing we kind of mushed in the, uh, the lines at the beginning. Now if you wanted to do a little white gouache and brighten up some of those, you can. I can try that if you want. Not that you can let me know because this is a recorded video, but I'll probably give that a little whirl. We'll see what that looks like. I don't think it really needs it, but, um, but it won't hurt anything. 
unless of course you're just trying to keep it as a transparent watercolor, then that's fine too. Now that one got a little big. I regret that one right there. That was not, don't do that on yours guys. My paint's getting a little thick there. This is watercolor, not gouache. If you wanted more red geraniums, if you mix some of that lemon yellow with uh, rose red, you would get like a brighter red. It would be less pink. Okay. I'm going to put the hinges on the door. I am going to mix myself up a really nice dark with, again, our ultramarine blue and our brown. I'm using up those pretty good. And I can't, let's see, hopefully I can just make out my um, lines enough to get, I gotta move this over because where I had, uh... where I, we had, um, had our thing a little crooked, we, <laughs> yeah, that's all me. Where I was a little crooked there, we uh, had to move our, I move our door over. So I got that little handle in there and we'll get our little hinges over here. I'm gonna move my paper a little bit. I cannot see where I painted them so I'm just gonna look back at my reference photo and put them back in freehand. So we got like a long skinny triangle and then we got like a heart on the end of it. And that angle is not correct, unfortunately. That one's a little better. And then we'll do another one. I want to move it up higher than what I had it before. No one be quite as angled as that because of the uh, perspective, but I'm just going to try to make this one match that one and be in agreement with that angle or in between anyway the two. That should go up to that. This got real clunky. I don't really like that, but you know what? I think it's well, is that bad? Mm. I think I might scrub it out. I don't think I really like that. The top one's all right, but the bottom one, not, not having it, not having it. Actually, while well, I'm at it, I could fix that too. Sedimentary colors, my friends. Don't leave home without them. All right, we'll need to let that dry before we can go over that. So I'm just gonna see if there's anything else I wanna do. Maybe a little shading. Well, it's just standing up pretty well. I still think I need a little shading underneath that wisteria. I'm not gonna do it too dark. Use up the uh, rest of the brown there. So all I'm going to do is just kind of put a little shadow where that plant is coming down. Our light's coming in this way so our shadow would be to the right side of the object that it's shadowing. You can also make a little pattern on the uh, wall and you want it kind of modeled because the wall's not smooth. The wall's stony. More blue in there because it's a little brown. 
And if you want to adjust any other shadows while you're at it, you can. I'm just going to tip this up a little bit and have a peek. All right, while I'm waiting for the door to dry, I do think that um, I will do a little bit of gouache on the wisteria. So I'm going to just use a little bit of this. There isn't any white gouache in that set or white watercolor, so I'm just going to use this little tube that I have here. Um, I'll put a little bit. I don't really have any room to squirt out. I'll just put a little smidgen. I don't need much right there. And what I'm going to do is just use the number eight round. You can even use a smaller one, but I don't have one in that set, so this will be fine. I'm going to blot my brush so it's just damp, and I'm going to pick up that just on the tip. So see, I just have a little on the tip. I don't have a ton. Can you see that? Okay, and then I am going to... I'm looking at my reference photo, but there's no wisteria on it, so I'm just going to... highlight the flowers. Now it might mix in with what we have underneath and actually just turn into like a pale shade. You can always add um, that you know watercolor over it if you feel like it's just too much if you want the look of this but you don't have white gouache you can use a white acrylic just make sure you clean your brush really well or use an acrylic paintbrush so you don't get that um you don't like harm your bristles because you know like with watercolor you can take your time and you can wash it out when you when you get around to it but acrylics you need to wash it out right away so as long as you keep that in mind you should be fine but with the gouache you don't have to worry I think I'm gonna mix up like a really pale lavender I'm gonna take I'm actually gonna take that white gouache gonna mix it right over here I can do some really pale purple flowers on top of other other foliage if I want to. And I could tap this over any of the white that I thought was a little bit too strong. I'm also thinking I want a little bit more green in there now this said uh, there's no white in the screen it's just green just green and yellow now I like to get a little bit of a spatter going so I don't have like really hard stiff edges. I'm not really going to have a lot of paint left over. I could spatter some of my purpley color in there, purpley pink. This will wipe right off your table, don't worry. I like that. Now on the plant pots, because they're kind of heavy opaque objects, if you want to do a little bit of dry brushing, with some gouache you can. Um, I just gotta find a place that I can put it where I can pick it up in a dry brush fashion. Um, it's like I need an extra little palette but they're all out of reach at the moment. I'm just gonna, I'll just use the bottom of this plastic container. So I'm drying my brush off and pick up some of that. I can just kind of Drag it across. Get 
with that patina. Can also use this anywhere I want to add a little highlight, a little bright spot in the stone. All right, let's get our hinges in there and we can call it a day. Maybe I will use the liner brush because I made such a mess with that wider one. And I'll start with the line going at the right angle and then I can just thicken it up if I need to. Okay, so let's do the bottom one first. Then let's do the top one, which won't be quite as, 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 a, steep, as, as a steep line. That's much better. Now I can load up this liner brush with the remaining bits of my dark colored paint and I can go in and throw details down. Look at that ledge there is casting the, uh, the stone threshold it's, or door jam that's casting the shadow onto the door itself. I do need a little bit of a glaze of shadow there, I think. I can do that with this brush pretty darn easily. A bit more under that, with those plants up there. You can just keep building. I mean, you could play with this. You could play in this theme all day, really. The edge of this plant pot it should be a little bit sharper. This corner. And you could always go in with pen and ink later if you're like, oh, I want to. I want to play with a little bit more of the design. I want to crisp up some edges. You totally could do that. Because you know, you could go darker and you could go lighter. You could go back in with more white gouache and have a lighter. some cracks in there. Have a, uh, you know, more highlights if you want to. It just depends on how loose or how tight you want it. And that's the decision that you make as the artist. So I'm going to call that done. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I had so much fun bringing it to you. It was a lot of fun. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Pottering Artist, and enter the giveaway. You can find all the details as well as links to The Pottering Artist in the video description. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.